It tells us that Stephanie's utility function is u equals w to the 0.5. She faces a choice between options A and B. A yields $4 with a probability of 0.5 and $49 otherwise, so a 50% chance of getting $49 as well. B yields $16 for sure. And then it says which is true, and it gives us some different preferences that could be true for Stephanie, whether she prefers A to B or B to A, or she's indifferent between the two. Well, to solve this, we need to look at her expected utility from each gamble. Gamble A, she has a 50% chance of getting $4, so $4 raised to the 0.5 times 50.5. She has a 50% chance of getting $49, so the square root of 49 times 0.5 we add these up and we see that her expected utility from gamble A is 4.5. Her expected utility from gamble B, she know, we know that she's gonna get $16 with 100% certainty, so one times 16 raised to the 0.5, and we see that that's worth $4 of expected utility. So she prefers A to B, and this is how we re represent preferences. A is preferred to B, is what this is saying. The next question says, Suppose instead that Stephanie's initial wealth is $100 and she faces a 20% probability of losing $36 and a 10% probability of an $84 loss. What is Stephanie's expected wealth? Well, we know that 0.2% of the time she's going to start with 100 and lose 36. 0.1% of the time she's going to start with 100 lose 84. It must be that 0.7% of the time she's going to start with 100 and not lose anything because we have to have all our probabilities adding up to 100%. So we are given 0.2 and 0.1. To solve for 0.7, we just simply add those two together and subtract those from one. So 0.2 plus 0.1 is 0.3. One minus 0.3 gives us the 0.7. We can add this up and we find that her expected wealth is equal to 84.4. The next question says, what is the certainty equivalent of, of the lottery in this previous question? Well, we know with a certain equivalent, we're going to be looking at her utility function. So we bring that in. Now we're going to have some math on the right side is equal to the square root of the certain equivalent on the left. We condense this down. We see the right side is equal to 9. So we square 9. We can find the certain equivalent, and that's equal to $81. The next question says, suppose that there are 1,000 individuals with the same utility function as Stephanie and with the same individual we uh, initial wealth and risk profile. So we're gonna use all the uh, information from the previous question. It says risks are independent across individuals and the administrative cost of an insurance policy is 40 cent per policy. If the insurance industry is perfectly competitive, what is the price of a policy? Well, perfectly competitive means they're not making a profit so that the price of the policy is gonna be equal to the expected losses plus the administrative cost. Well, the expected losses is how much do we start out with and how much do we expect to have at the end of the year. So we start out with our wealth initial, which is $100. We expect to have at the end of the year our expected wealth, which was $84.4. So our expected losses is $15.60. To find the price of the policy, we're going to add $0.40 cent to that. And we see that the price of the policy is $16. So the last question says, what is the value added by the insurance industry in this previous question? Well, the value created is the most that individuals would be willing to pay for insurance minus what they actually pay for insurance multiplied by how many individuals or how many customers are in the market. Let's define the most they'd be willing to pay for insurance. That is the wealth initial minus the certainty equivalent. So their initial wealth was $100. They have $100 today they're willing to accept $81 because that was their certainty equivalent in order to not take any risk. So the difference between that number, the $19, that is the most they'd be willing to pay for insurance. If they have $100 today and they would trade that gamble for $81 to, to, to get rid of all the risk, it must be that the most they'd be willing to pay for insurance is $19. And we see that here. The, what they actually pay is the price of the policy. That's $16. So if they're willing to pay $19 and they actually pay $16, they just had a value created per person of $3. To find the total value created, we multiply by that, that by 1,000 people in the industry, and we see the total value created by insurance in this question is $3,000.